Fair Queen of England, worthy Margaret, sit down with us. It ill befits thy state of birth if thou should stand while Louis doth sit. No, mighty King of France. Now Margaret must strike her sail and learn a while to sew. Oh, nay, sit thee by our side and tell thy grief. It shall be eased if France can yield relief. Now, therefore, be it known to noble Louis that Henry, sole possessor of my love, is of a king become a banished man and forced to live in Scotland a forlorn, while proud, ambitious Edward, Duke of York, usurps the regal title and the seat of England's true anointed lawful king. This is the cause that I, poor Margaret, with this my son, Prince Edward, Henry's heir, am come to crave thy just and lawful aid. <sighs> What's he approaches boldly to our presence? Our Earl of Warwick, Edward's greatest friend. Welcome, brave Warwick. What brings thee to France? From worthy Edward, King of Albion, I come, in kindness and unfeigned love. First to do greetings to thy royal person, and then to crave a league of amity. And lastly, to confirm that amity with nuptial knots, if thou art safe to grant the virtuous Lady Bona, thy fair sister, to England's king in lawful marriage. If that go forward, Henry's hope is done. And gracious madam, in our king's behalf, I am commanded with your leave and favor, humbly to kiss your hand. And with my tongue to tell the passion of my sovereign's heart. Queen Margaret, Prince Edward and uh, Oxford, about to say for our request to stand aside, while I use further conference with Warwick. Heavens grant that Warwick's words bewitch him not. <coughs> now, Warwick, tell me, even upon thy conscience, is Edward your true king? For I were loath to link with him that were not lawful chosen. Thereon I pawn my credit and mine honor. But is he gracious in the people's eye? The more that Henry was unfortunate. <sighs> Then further, all uh, dissembling set aside. Tell me for truth the measure of his love unto our sister, Bona. Such, it seems, as may beseem a monarch like himself. Now, sister, let us hear your firm resolve. Your grant or your denial shall be mine. Ah. <laughs> then, Warwick, thus. Our sister shall be Edward, My and now forth shall articles be drawn. Deceitful, Warwick! It was thy device by this alliance to make void my suit. Until thy coming, Louis was Henry's friend. And still his friend to him, and Margaret. But if your title to the crown be weak, as may appear by Edward's good success, then it is but reason that I be released from giving aid, which late I promised. Warwick, this is some post to us. On thee. My Lord Ambassador, these letters are for you, sent from your brother, Marquis Montague. These from our King, unto your Majesty. And Madam, these for you, from whom I know not. I like it well that our fair Queen and Mistress smiles at her news while Warwick frowns at his. Nay, mark how Louis stamps as he were nettled. I hope all's for the best. Warwick, what are thy news? And yours, fair queen? Mine such has filled my heart with unhoped joys. Mine full of sorrow and heart discontent. What? Has your king married the widow Grey? Is this the alliance that he seeks with France? Dare you presume to scorn us in this matter? I told your majesty as much before. This proveth Edward's love and Warwick's honesty. King Louis. I here protest in sight of heaven that I am clear from this misdeed of Edward's. No more my king, for he dishonors me, but most himself if he could see his shame. And to repair my honor lost for him, I here renounce him and return to Henry. My noble queen, let former grudges pass, and henceforth I am thy true servitor. I will revenge his wrong to Lady Bona and replant Henry in his former state. Warwick, these words have turned my hate to love. And I forgive and quite forget old faults and joy that thou becomes King Henry's friend. So much his friend. I, his unfeigned friend, 
that if King Louis vouchsafed to furnish us with some few bands of chosen soldiers, I'll undertake to land them on our coast and force young Edward from his seat by war. Therefore, at last, I firmly am resolved. You shall have aid. Let me give humble thanks for all at once. Then, England's messenger, return in post and tell false Edward, thy supposed king, that Louis of France is sending over maskers to revel it with him <laughs> and his new bride. Tell him, in hope he'll prove a widower shortly. I'll wear the willow garland for his sake. <laughs> Tell him my mourning weeds are cast aside and I am ready to put armor on. Tell him from me that he has done me wrong and I'll uncrown him ere to be long. <laughs> Yet, uh, Warwick, ere thou go, answer my doubt. What pledge have we of thy firm loyalty? This shall assure my constant loyalty, that if our queen and this young prince agree, I'll join my eldest daughter, Lady Anne, to him forthwith in holy wedlock bands. Son, Edward, she is fair and virtuous, therefore delay not. Give thy hand to Warwick. Yes, I accept her, for she well deserves it. And here to pledge my vow, I give my hand. I say we now, these soldiers shall be levied. I long till Edward fall by war's mischance for mocking marriage with a dame of France. I came from Edward as ambassador, but I return his sworn and mortal foe. I was the chief that raised him to the crown, but I'll be chief again to bring him down. Not that I pity Henry's misery, but seek revenge on Edward's mockery. Now tell me, Brother Clarence, what think you of this new marriage with the Lady Grey? Hath not our brother made a worthy choice? Alas, you know, tis far from hence to France. How could he stay till Warwick made return? <laughs> My lord, forbear this talk. Here comes the king. And his well-chosen bride. I might tell him plainly what I think. Now, Brother Clarence, how like you are choice that you stand pensive as half malcontent? As well as Louis of France or the Earl of Warwick, which are so weak in courage and in judgment that they'll take no offense at our abuse. Suppose they take offense without a cause. They are but Louis and Warwick. I am Edward, your king, and Warwick's, and must have my will. And shall have your will, because our king. Yet a hasty marriage seldom prove it well. Yea, Brother Richard, are you offended too? Oh, no, not I. Oh, God forbid that I should wish them severed whom God hath joined together. Aye, and to a pity to sunder them that yoke so well together. Setting your scorns and your mislike aside, tell me some reason why the Lady Grey should not become my wife and England's queen. Then this is my opinion. <coughs> That King Louis becomes your enemy for mocking him about the marriage of the Lady Bona. And uh, Warwick, doing what you gave in charge, is now dishonored by this new marriage. Aye. What of that? It was my will and grant. And for this once my will shall stand for law. And uh, furthermore, your grace hath not done well to give the heir and daughter of Lord Scales unto the brother of your loving bride. She better would have fitted me. Or Clarence. Alas, poor Clarence. Is it for a wife that thou art malcontent? I will provide thee. In choosing for yourself, you showed your judgment. Which being shallow, you shall give me leave to play the broker in mine own behalf. <laughs> and to that end, I shortly mind to leave you. Leave me or tarry. Edward will be king and not be tied unto his brother's will. My, My lord. lord. 
Before it pleased his majesty to raise my state to title of a queen, do me but right, and you must all confess that I was not ignoble of descent, and meaner than myself had had like fortune. But as this title honours me, and mine, so your dislikes, to whom I would be pleasing, do cloud my joys with danger and with sorrow. My love, forbear to fawn upon their frowns. What danger or what sorrow can befall thee, so long as Edward is thy constant friend, and their true sovereign, whom they must obey? Nay, whom they shall obey, and love thee too, unless they seek for hatred at my hands. I hear, yet say not much, but think the more. Now, messenger, what letters or what news from France? My sovereign each. No letters and few words. But such as I, without your special pardon, dare not relate. Go to, we pardon thee, what answer makes King Louis unto our letters. And my depart, these were his very words. Go tell false Edward, your supposed king, that Louis of France is sending over maskers to revel it with him and his new bride. It's Louis so brave. Belike he thinks me Henry. <laughs> but what says Lady Bona to my marriage? These were her words, uttered with mild disdain. Tell him. In hope he'll prove a widower shortly, I'll wear the willow garland for his sake. I blame not her. She could say little less. But what said Warwick to these injuries? He, more incensed against your majesty than all the rest, discharged me with these words. Tell him from me that he hath done me wrong, and therefore I'll uncrown him <gasps> ere it be long. Does the traitor breathe out so proud words? Well, I will arm me being thus forewarned. They shall have wars and pay for their presumption. But say his Warwick friends with Margaret. My gracious sovereign, they are so linked in friendship that young Prince Edward marries Warwick's daughter. The like the elder, the sweet Lady Anne, Clarence will have the younger. Now, farewell, brother king, and sit you fast, for I will hence to Warwick's other daughter, that though I lack a kingdom, yet in marriage I may not prove inferior to yourself. You that love me and Warwick, follow me. Not I. My thoughts aim at a further matter. I stay not for the love of Edward, but the crown. So God help Montague, so he prove true. And Hastings, as he favours Edward's cause. Say, Brother Richard, will you stand by us? Aye, in despite of all that shall withstand you. For why hath nature made me halt downright? But that I should be valiant and stand to it. For if I would, I cannot run away. Why so? Then I am sure of victory. So therefore let us head and lose no hour. Till we meet Warwick with his foreign power. Trust me, my lord, all hitherto goes well. The common people by numbers swarm to us. <coughs> but see where Somerset and Clarence come. Speak suddenly, my lords. Are we all friends? Fear not that, my lord. Then, gentle Clarence, welcome unto Warwick. And welcome, Somerset. I hold it cowardice to rest mistrustful where a noble heart hath pawned an open hand in sign of love. Else might I think that Clarence, Edward's brother, were but a feigned friend to our proceedings. But welcome, sweet Clarence. My daughter shall be thine. And now what rests? But in night's coverture, thy brother being carelessly encamped, his soldiers lurking in the town about, and but attended by a simple guard, we may surprise and take him at our pleasure. Come on, my master. Let us take our stand. The king by this is set him down to sleep. What? Will he not to bed? Why, no. For he hath made a solemn vow never to lie or take his natural rest till Warwick or himself be quite suppressed. Ah, tomorrow, then, the like shall be the day. Ah, 
If Warwick be so near as men report... Get on the guard! What are they going to fly there? Richard Hastings, let them go. Here is the Duke. The Duke? Why, Warwick, when we parted, thou callst me king. Aye, but the case is altered. When you disgraced me in my embassy, then I degraded you from being king and come now to create you Duke of York. Alas, how should you govern any kingdom that know not how to use ambassadors, nor how to be contented with one wife, nor how to use your brother's brotherly? Yea, brother of Clarence, art thou here too? Henry the Sixth shall wear the English crown and be true king indeed. Thou but the shadow. My lord of Somerset, at my request, see that forthwith Duke Edward be conveyed unto my brother, Archbishop of York. I'll follow you. Now for a while, farewell, Plantagenet. <coughs> what now remains, my lords, for us to do but march to London with our soldiers? That's the first thing that we have to do, to free King Henry from imprisonment and see him seated in the regal throne. What makes you in this sudden change? Why, Brother Rivers, are you yet to learn what late misfortune has befallen King Edward? These news, I must confess, are full of grief. Yet, gracious madam, bear it as you may. Warwick may lose that now has won the day. Till then, fair hope must hinder life's decay. And neither rather wean me from despair. For love of Edward's offspring in my womb. This is it that makes me bridal passion. And bear with mildness my misfortune's cross. Aye. For this I draw in many a tear. And stop the rising of blood-sucking sighs. Lest with my sighs or tears. I blast or drown King Edward's fruit. True heir to the English crown. But, madam, where is Warwick then become? I'm informed he comes towards London to set the crown once more on Henry's head. Guess thou the rest. King Edward's friends must sound. I'll henceforth whist unto the sanctuary to save at least the heir of Edward's right. Come, therefore, let us fly while we may fly. If Warwick take us, we are sure to die. Now, my lord of Stafford, leave off to wonder why I brought you hither into the cheapest thicket of the park. Thus stands the case. You know the king, my brother, is prisoner to the bishop here, at whose hands he hath good usage and great liberty. I have advertised him by his secret means that if about this hour he makes this way under the colour of his usual game, he shall here find his friends with horse and men to set him free from his captivity. <laughs> This way, my lord, this way lies the game. Nay, this way, man. See where the huntsmen stand. Brother, the time and case require of haste. Your horse stands ready at the far corner. But whither shall we then? To Lynn, my lord, and ship from thence to Flanders. Huntsman, what sayest thou? Wilt thou go along? Uh, I'd better do so than tarry and be hanged. Mm. Come, then. To tell him what I do. <laughs> Brave peers, rejoice that God and friends have shaken Edward from the regal seat and turned my captive state to liberty. Warwick. And Clarence, give me both your hands. Now join your hands, and with your hands, your hearts, let no dissension hinder government. I make you both protectors of this land, while I myself will lead a private life, and in devotion spend my latter days to sin's rebuke, and my creator's praise. But with the first of all your chief affairs, let me 
Entreat, for I command no more. But Margaret, your queen, and my son, Edward, be sent for to return from France with speed. It shall be done, your highness, with all haste. My lord of Somerset, what youth is that of whom you have so tender care? My liege is young Henry Tudor, uh, Earl of Richmond. Come hither, England's hope. The secret powers suggest the truth to my divining thoughts. This pretty lad will prove our country's bliss. His looks are full of peaceful majesty. His head by nature framed to wear a crown. Make much of him, my lords. On this is he must help you. More than you are hurt by me. What news, my friend? That Edward is escaped from your brother and, and fled, as he here since, to Burgundy. Unsavory news, but how made he escape? He was conveyed by Richard, Duke of Gloucester, and the Lord Hastings, who attended him in secret ambush on the forest side, and from the bishop's huntsman rescued him. My brother was too careless of his charge. Come, let us hence, my sovereign, and hear from this good fellow of his slighted foe. My lord, I like not of this flight of Edward's. But doubtless Burgundy will yield him help, and we shall have more wars before it be long. Oh. As Henry's late presaging prophecy did glad my heart with hope of this young Richmond, so doth my heart misgive me in these conflicts what may befall him, to his harm and ours. Therefore, Lord Oxford, to prevent the worst, forthwith we'll send him hence to Brittany, till storms be past of civil enmity. Why? For if Edward repossess the crown, tis like that Richmond with the rest shall down. It shall be so. He shall to Brittany. <laughs> Come, therefore, let's about it speedily. <laughs> now, Brother Richard, Lord Hastings, and the rest, yet thus far fortune maketh us amends and says that once more I shall interchange my waned state with Henry's regal crown. Well, have we passed and now repassed the seas and brought desired help from Burgundy? What now remains, we being thus arrived from Ravenspur Haven before the gates of York, but that we enter as unto our dukedom. <laughs> <laughs> the gates made fast. Brother, I like not this. My liege, I'll knock once more to summon them. My lord. We were forewarned of your coming and shut the gates for safety of ourselves. For now we owe allegiance unto Henry. But, Master Mayor, if Henry be your king, yet Edward at the least is Duke of York. True, my good lord, I know you for no less. Why, and I challenge nothing but my dukedom as being well content with that alone. But when the fox has once got in his nose, he soon finds a means to make the body follow. <laughs> why, Master Mayor, why stand you in a doubt? Open the gates, we are King Henry's friends. I say you so. The gates shall then be opened. A wise stout captain, and soon persuaded. The good old man would fain that all were well, so twere not long of him. <laughs> but being entered, I doubt not I, but we shall soon persuade both him and all his brothers unto reason. <laughs> so, Master Mayor. These gates must not be shut but in the night, or of a, in the time of war. What, fear not, man, but yield me up the keys. Brother, this is Sir John Montgomery, our trusty friend on his abbey to see you. Welcome, Sir John. But why come you in arms? To help King Edward in his time of storm. Thanks, good Montgomery, but we now forget our title to the crown and only claim our dukedom, till God please to send to the rest. And fare you well, for I will hence again. I came to serve a king and not a duke. Drum a strike up and let us march away. And they stay, Sir John, a while, and we'll debate. Yeah, my lord, don't forget. What talk you of debating? In few words, if you'll not here proclaim yourself our king, I'll leave you to your fortune and be gone. 
Uh, brother, uh, why stand you on nice points? Away with scrupulous wit. Now, arms, Master Wood. Brother, we will proclaim you out of hand. Uh, Look, the noise thereof will bring you many friends. Uh, then be it as you will. No, my lord. Is my right, and Henry but usurps the diadem. Aye, now no, my no, sovereign no, speaketh no, like himself, and now will I be Edward's no, champion. Sound trumpets! My Edward lord. shall be here proclaimed. No, 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 no. Soldier, read our proclamation. Edward the Fourth, no. by the grace of God, King of England and France, and Lord of Ireland. What counsel, lords? Edward from Belgia hath passed in safety through the narrow seas, and with his troops doth march amain towards London, and many giddy people flock to him. Let's levy men and beat him back again. Little far is quickly trodden out. In Warwickshire, I have true hearted friends. Farewell, my sovereign. Farewell, my Hector, my Troy's true hope. Farewell, sweet lords. Let's meet at Coventry. Here at the palace will I rest a while. Cousin of Exeter, what thinks your lordship? Methinks the power that Edward hath in field should not be able to encounter mine. The doubt is that he will seduce the rest. Ah, uh, that's not my fear. My mead hath got me fame. I have not been desirous of their wealth, nor much oppressed them with great subsidies, nor forward of revenge, though they much erred. Why then should they love Edward more than me? Ah, clerk, my lord, what shots are these? Proclaim us king of England. Hence with him to the tower, let him not speak. And Lord Ben, we are caught towards what Coventry, where Pedantry Warwick now has flown. Brave warriors, march remain towards Coventry. Where is the post that came from Valley and Oxford? How far hence is thy lord, mine honest fellow? By this at Dunsmore, marching hitherward. How far off is our brother Montague? By this at Daintree, with a puissant troop. Say, Somerville, how nigh is Clarence now? At Southern, I should leave him with his forces. And to expect him here some two hours hence. Now, Warwick, wilt thou ope the city gates? Speak gentle words and humbly bend thy knee. Call Edward king, and at his hands beg mercy, and he shall pardon thee these outrages. I had rather chop this hand off at a blow than bear so low a sail to strike to thee. Oh, cheerful colours, see when Oxford comes. Oxford! Oxford! Oxford. Wilt thou stab Caesar too? Father of Warwick, know you what this means? Look here. I throw my life at you. I will not ruinate my father's house who gave his blood to line the stones together and set up Lancaster. Why trowst thou, Warwick, that Clarence is so harsh? So blunt, unnatural, to bend the fatal instruments of war against his brother and his lawful king. And so, proud hearted Warwick, I defy thee. And to my brother, turn my blushing cheeks. Pardon me, Edward. I will make amends. And Richard. Do not frown upon my faults, for I will henceforth be no more unconstant. Ah, welcome more. I'm ten times more beloved than if thou never hadst deserved our hate. Welcome, good Clarence. This is brother-like. Passing traitor, perjured and unjust. Now, Warwick, wilt thou leave the town and fight? Alas, I am not cooped here for defense. I will away towards Barnet and bid thee battle, Edward. If thou darest, Yes, Warwick, Edward dares, and leads the way. Lords to the field! St. George and Beaver!
body shows, my blood, my want of strength, my sick heart shows that I must yield my body to the earth and by my fall. The conquest is to my fall. These eyes that now are filled with death's black veil. Have been as piercing as the midday sun to search the secret treasons of the world. The wrinkles in my brow, now filled with blood, were likened oft to kingly sepulchres. For who lived king? But I could dig his grave. And who dost smile? And Warwick bent his brow. Now, now my glory smeared in dust and blood. My fox, my walks, my manners that I had, he now forsake me. And of all my lands, there's nothing left me but my body's length. Why, what is pomp? Rule, rain, but earth and dust, and live we how we can. Yet die we must. Warwick! Oh, Warwick, wert thou as we are, we might recover all our loss again. The Queen from France has brought a peace and power. Even now we heard the news. How oh, couldst thou fly? And Montague. <laughs> If thou be there, sweet brother, trick my hand. Come quickly, Montague, or I am dead. Ah, oh, Warwick. Montague has breathed his last. Sweet rest his soul. My lords, and save yourselves. For oh, Warwick, bid you all farewell. To meet in Away. Away to meet the Queen's great power, which even now makes towards Tewkesbury. And as we march, our strength will be augmented. Come, Lord, away. men there sit and wail their loss, but surely seek how to redress their harms. What, though the mast be now blown overboard, the cable broke, 
the holding anchor lost, and half our sailors swallowed in the flood, yet lives our pilot still? Is meet that he should leave the helm, and like a fearful lad with tearful eyes, add water to the sea, and give more strength to that which hath too much? Whilst in his moan the ship splits on the rock, which industry and the courage might have saved. Ah, what a shame. Ah, what a fault was this. Say, Warwick was our anchor, what of that? And Montague, our topmast, what of him? Our slaughtered friends, the tackles, what of these? Why, is not Oxford here another anchor? And Somerset another goodly mast? The friends of France, our shrouds and tacklings? And though unskillful, why not Ned and I for once allowed the skillful pilot's charge? We will not from the helm to sit and weep. But keep our course, though the rough winds say no. From shelves and rocks that threaten us with wreck. As good to chide the waves as speak them fair. <laughs> and what is Edward but a ruthless sea? What Clarence but a quicksand of deceit? And Richard but a ragged, fatal rock? All these the enemies to our poor bark. Say you can swim. Alas, tis but a while. Tread on the sand, why, there you quickly sink. Bestride the rock, the tide will wash you off. Or else you famish. That's a threefold death. This speak I, Lord, to let you understand. In case some one of you would fly from us. But there's no hope for mercy with the brothers more than with ruthless waves. With sands and rocks. Why, courage then. What cannot be avoided for childish weakness to lament or fear. Methinks a woman of this valiant spirit should, if a coward heard her speak these words, infuse his breast with magnanimity and make him naked foil a man at arms. I speak not this as doubting any here, for did I but suspect a fearful man, he should have leave to go away betimes, lest, in our need, he might infect another, and make him of like spirit to himself. If any such be here, as God forbid, let him depart before we need his help. Oh, brave young prince, thy famous grandfather has live again in thee. There you lords, for Edward is at hand! I thought no less than it is policy to hate that fast and find ourselves provided that he's deceived! We are in readiness! Yonder stands the thorny wood, which by the heaven's assistance and your strengths must by the roots be hewn up yet ere night. I need not add more fuel to your fire, for well I know ye blaze to burn them out. Give signal to the fight, and do it, lords. <laughs> Here a period of tumultuous broils. Away with Oxford to Hames Castle, straight. For Somerset, off with his guilty head. Away with them, I will not hear them speak. For my part, I'll not trouble thee with words. Nor I, but stoop with patience to my fortune. So part we sadly in this troubled world, to meet with joy and sweet Jerusalem. Is proclamation made who finds the Prince of Wales shall have a high reward and he his life? It is. 
And lo, where youthful Edward comes. Bring forth the gallant. Let us hear him speak. Edward, what resolution canst thou make for bearing arms, for stirring up my subjects? And all the trouble thou hast turned me to. Speak like a subject, proud, ambitious York. Suppose that I am now my father's mouth. Resign thy crown, and where I stand, kneel thou. Whilst I propose the self-same words to thee, which traitor thou wouldst have me answer to. Ah, that thy father had been so resolved. For God's sake, take away this captive scold. Nay, take away this scolding crookback, rather. Peace, willful boy, or I will charm your tongue. Untutored lad, you are too malapert. I know my duty. You are all undutiful. Lascivious Edward. And thou, perjured George. And thou, misshapen Dick. I tell ye all, I am your better, traitors as ye are. And thou, you zerpst my father's right. And mine! Take that! Ah! Oh, like of this railer here. Sprawl, thou. Take that to end. Ah! And death for treating me with death. Oh, kill me, George! Marry, and shall. Roll Victor Paul, for we have done too much. Why should she live to fill the world with words? What does she swoon use mean for her recovery? Damn it. Excuse me to the king, my brother. I'll hence to London on a serious matter. Yeah, thou come there. Be sure to hear some news. What? What? The tower. The tower. Ned. Sweet Ned. Speak to thy mother, boy. Canst thou not speak? Oh, traitors! Murderers! What's worse than murder that I may name it? No, no, my heart will burst in if I speak. And I will speak so that my heart may burst. You have no children, butchers. If you had, the thought of them would have stirred up remorse. But if you ever chance to have a child, look in his youth to have him so cut off as Desmond, you have read this sweet young prince. Away with her. Go bear her hence perforce. Clarence, dispatch me here. I'll pardon thee, my death. By heaven, I swear I will not do it. But Clarence, do. Sweet Clarence, do thou do it. Did you not hear me swear I would not do it? I? But thou usest to forswear thyself. Before it was sin, but now does charity. What wilt thou not? What is that devil's butcher, Richard? Hard favored Richard. Richard! Where art thou? Away, I say, I charge thee, bear her hence! So come to you and yours as to this prince. We had dismissed the common sort with pay and thanks, and let's away to London. And see our gentle queen, how well she fares. By this I hope she hath a son. For me. Where's Richard gone? To London, all in post. And as I guess, to make a bloody supper. In the tower. my lord. What? At 
your book so hard? I, my good lord. My lord, I should say rather. Shall I leave us to ourselves? We must confer. So flies the reckless shepherd from the wolf. So first the harmless sheep doth yield his fleece, then next his throat unto the butcher's knife. What scene of death hath Roscius now to act? Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. The thief doth fear each bush an officer. A bird that hath been limed in a bush with trembling wings must doubt of every bush. And I, the hapless male to one sweet bird, have now the fatal object in my eye where my poor young was limed, was caught, and killed. Why, what a peevish fool was that of Crete that taught his son the office of a fowl. And yet for all his wings, the fool was drowned. I, Daedalus, my poor boy, Icarus, thy father, Minos, that denied our course, the son that seared the wings of my sweet boy, thy brother, Edward, and thyself, the sea, whose envious gulf did swallow up his life. Ah, oh, kill me with thy weapon, not with words. Thy breast can better brook thy dagger's point than can my ears that tragic history. But wherefore dost thou come? Is it for my life? Thinkst thou I am an executioner? A persecutor, I am sure thou art. If murdering innocents be executing, why then? Thou art an executioner. Thy son I killed for his presumption. Hadst thou been killed when first thou didst presume, thou hadst not lived to kill a son of mine. And thus I prophesy that many a thousand which now mistrust no parcel of my fear and many an old man sigh, and many a widow's, and many an orphan's water standing eye. Men for their sons, wives for their husbands, orphans for their parents, timeless death shall rule the hour that ever thou was born. The owl shrieked at thy birth, and gave you sign. The night crow cried, a boding luckless time. Dogs howled, and hideous tempests shook down trees. The raven rooked her on the chimney's top, and chattering pies in dismal discord sung. Thy mother felt more than a mother's pain, and yet brought forth less than a mother's hope. To wit, an indigested and deformed lump, not like the fruit of such a goodly tree. Teeth had thou in thy head when thou wast born, to signify thou came to bite the world, and did the rest be through which I have heard, thou came to hear no more. Die, prophet, in thy speech. For this, amongst the rest, was I ordained. Will the aspiring blood of Lancaster 
sink into the ground. I thought it would have mounted. See how my sword weeps for the poor king's death. Oh, may such purple tears be always shed from those that wish the downfall of our house. If any spark of life be yet remaining, I that have neither pity, love, nor fear. Indeed, it is true that Henry told of me. But I have often heard my mother say, I came into the world with my legs forward. Had I not reason, think ye, to make haste and seek their ruin that usurped our right? The midwife wondered and the women cried, Oh, Jesus, bless us, he is born with teeth. <laughs> And so I was, which plainly signified that I should snarl and bite and play the dog. And since the heavens have shaped my body so, let hell make crooked my mind to answer it. I have no brother. I am like no brother. And this word, love, that Grabeers call divine, be resident in men like one another, and not in me. I am myself. Alone. Clarence, beware. Thou keeps me from the light. But I will sort a pitchy day for thee. For I will buzz abroad such prophecies that Edward shall be fearful of his life. And then to purge his fear, I'll be thy death. King Henry and the prince's son are gone. Clarence, thy turn is next. And then the rest. Hunting myself but bad, till I be best. in England's royal throne, repurchased with the blood of enemies. Hooray! What valiant foemen like the autumn's corn have we mown down in tops of all their pride? Three dukes of Somerset, threefold renowned for hardy and undoubted champions, two Cliffords as the father and the son, and two Northumberlands, two braver men there spurred their coursers at the trumpet sound. With them, the two brave bears, Warwick and Montague, that in their chains fettered the kingly lion and made the forest tremble when they roared. Thus have we swept suspicion from our seat and made our footstool of security. Come here the best. <laughs> and let me kiss my boy. Young Ned, for thee, thine uncles and myself have in their armors watched the winter's night, went all afoot in summer's scalding heat, that thou mightst repossess the crown in peace. And from our labors thou shalt reap the gain. At last his harvest of your head will laid. Clarence and Gloucester, love my lovely queen, and kiss your princely nephew brothers both. The duty that I owe unto your majesty, I seal upon the lips of this sweet babe. Thanks, noble Clarence. Worthy brother, thanks. And that I love the tree from whence thou sprangst. Witness the loving kiss I give the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> now am I seated as my soul desires, having my country's peace and brother's love. 
What would your grace have done with Margaret? Rainier, her father, to the king of France, hath pawned the Sicils in Jerusalem. <laughs> and hither have they sent it for her ransom. <laughs> Away with her, and warped her heads to France. <laughs> and now what rests but that we spend the time with stately triumphs, mirthful comic shows, such as befits the pleasure of the court. Sound drums and trumpets! Farewell, Sardanoi! For here, I hope, begins the...